the influence of motherhood on the daughters or the influence of older moms, older women, on younger women, younger wives, younger mothers cannot be overemphasized. To be specific, that's one of the reasons why this channel exists. In today's video, we will be paying closer attention to how one's mom's refusal to accept correction led to a series of events that eventually led to the death of one of the greatest prophets in the Bible, as well as in this video, we'll be looking at unusual miracles that Jesus did. I'll see you soon. Welcome to my channel. This is where you have lots of devotionals, Bible studies, and encouragement through your faith work. Now, subscribe and hit the notification bell. I'll see you Hello, soon. Hello, you're welcome to my channel. My name is Ifoma Samuel. I'm excited that you are here. If you're new, kindly click the subscribe button as well as the notification bell so that way you don't miss when a new video drops. Having said that, Today is our day 119 and we are looking at Matthew chapter 14 all the way to Matthew chapter 16. The theme of our discussion today is the unusual miracles of Jesus. All right, so let's um, let's look at the unusual miracles of Jesus. Then we can uh, revisit the death of John the Baptist and how, um, how all of the steps, okay, how one thing led to another that led to the death of John the Baptist. Let's start with the miracle of the five loaves and two fishes. I love that testimony. It's an encouragement and it's a reminder that God will definitely sort his people out. God will definitely provide for us even in the midst of lack, in the midst of want, in the midst of hopelessness. God never gives up on us and we shouldn't give up on God. All right. So let's look at that. If you look at um, Matthew chapter 14 verse 16 and Jesus said unto them they need not depart give ye them to eat now the people have been with him for a while now they're in a desert place and um, you know he was just like oh they, it's late for them to go back to the village we have done the um, we've done some survey some sermon and teachings and all of that it's too late they're, they're going to be hungry I love the fact that Jesus was very human he understood the human needs in as much as um, we we um, have a need for spiritual feeling. There is also a need for us to be filled physically, all right? <laughs> and he paid attention to making sure that the people were provided for. Uh, then he goes on to ask the question, okay, what do we have there? And then he says, they say unto him, we have here but five loaves and two fishes. Now that is that is very little compared to the amount of people that came for that um, for that crusade or for that meeting. Verse 19 says, And he commanded the multitude to sit down on the grass and took the five loaves and two fishes, looking up to heaven, which shows dependence, which shows, okay, God, I, I, I cannot do this thing. This is solely your business. This is something that is in your purview to attend to. He blessed and break and gave the loaves to his disciples and the, the disciples to the multitude. So he blessed it, then he gave to the disciples, and then the disciples went on to serve the multitude. Now, it doesn't tell us exactly when all the multiplication happened, but as they continued to share, you know, it's a big miracle when you continue to share something that was like five loaves. Okay, let's see how it goes. And miraculously, the food just keeps going. It keeps multiplying by itself. And then people get <laughs> keep getting filled, you know? And eventually... They all, and they did eat, they, they all ate, okay, they all were satisfied, they were filled, and the, guess what, the fragments that were taken up were about, what, 12 baskets full. Where did the food come from? <laughs> what an amazing miracle. You know, there were 5,000 men, apart from women and children, that were fed with five loaves of bread and two fishes. What an amazing testimony. That's another unusual um, testimony that reminds us, unusual miracle that reminds us of God's provision, even in the middle of nothing, midst of nothing. What about walking on the sea? I love that testimony as well. And then 
um, the face of, of, of Peter. And Peter sees it and like excited. Ah, Jesus is walking in the sea. Oh, bid me to come, bid me to come. I can imagine. Okay, verse 25 of Matthew chapter 14 continues. And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled. Ah, wow, what a sight. Saying, it is a spirit. And they cried out for fear. But straight away, Jesus spake unto them, saying, Be of good cheer, it is I. Be not afraid. Hallelujah. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it, thou, if it be thou, bid me to come unto thee on the water. Now, this is an example of Peter saying, okay, is it real? Is that you? If it's you, tell me to come. <laughs> I, I, I love the fact that Peter was just being so real, you know. Um, it's not like he wanted to doubt Jesus, but it's, it felt like he was doubting. He felt like, could this be real? Is this Jesus? Is he really walking on water? What power is this? What authority? I need to be a part of what's happening. I need to be a part of this miracle going on. Unfortunately, okay, something happens. And Peter answered, and uh, okay, and Peter answered him and said, okay, we've read that. Verse 29 says, and he said, come. And he went, and, and when, sorry, and when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on water too. Okay, so he walked on water to go to Jesus. But when he saw the wind busterous, he was afraid and he, and beginning to sink, he cried saying, Lord, save me. Wow. And isn't Peter like a lot of us? We have great faith at one moment. And when we start to see the clouds changing, we start to see the storms of life. And then we're like, oh my goodness, it's going to swallow us. Oh my goodness. And then we forget that we are walking on the sea. We forget the fact that if the power of God helped us to walk on the sea, he is well able to sustain us even when the storms of life or the winds of life come. So the wind of life will come. The storms of life are going to threaten they're going to threaten and test that faith of ours. Wow. And Peter, and <laughs> Peter cried out, Lord, save me. Okay, God. All right. Thank you. Uh, save me. Okay. Don't let me drown here. And immediately Jesus stretched for his hand and caught him and said unto him, O thou of little faith, wherefore did thou doubt? So doubt is something that robs us of our testimony. When we doubt, when we, when we, begin to second guess is god really in this thing is it me really is it god is it me you know when you start to ask lots of questions like that the testimonies and the miracles start to slip off okay then we look at the miracle of touching the hem of his garment one woman's faith okay oh lord if i can just touch the hem if i can just you know touch the hem of of jesus's garment what a beautiful beautiful read um, let's see where that is. Uh, the touching of the hem of his garment. We can read more about that in the book of um, Matthew chapter 14. Okay, Matthew chapter 14, verse 36. Now, it wasn't only the um, the woman, this uh, the Syrophoenician woman that you know touched the hem of his garment. There are other people that touched the hem of the garment. That's why I wrote that there. You know, that's why the scripture like really came came up to my face. It says, and be, and besought him that they might only touch the hem of his garment, and as many as touched were made perfectly whole. Now, sometimes all that we need to do is just to have faith and just touch the hem of Jesus. That's all. That if we have faith enough, okay, we can move mountains. We can do all sorts of things if we have faith enough and we believe and we have no doubt in our heart. God is able. To heal us, God is able to, you know, do that one impossible task, impossible miracle. That was, like, oh my goodness, this is an impossible thing. God is able to do the supernatural. God is able to do well more than we ask or we we think or we believe. God is well more than able to attend to all of our, our needs and requests. Now, going on, as we gradually wrap up, the encounter of Herodias, you know, um, the the wife of of, of Herod or the Let's look at let's look at Matthew chapter chapter fourteen, verse um, verse one. Let's start from one. It says, "At that time, Herod the Tetrarch heard of the fame of Jesus, and he said and said unto his servants, This is John the Baptist. He, he is risen from the dead.' And they were therefore, you know, 
and therefore mighty works do show for themselves in him. All right. For Herod had laid hold on John. That's why he's scared of Jesus now. He has laid hold on John and bound him and put him in prison for Herodias' sake. Who is Herodias? His brother's wife, his brother Philip's wife. Now, for John said unto him, it is not lawful for you to have her. Now, that's the ministry of the prophet. It's a difficult thing to go against, you know, to, to tell people that are high up there, high up in influence, and tell them, no, this is not scriptural. This is, this is not right before God. All right? So his response should have been one of, oh, God, have mercy. But again, you know, the human, the human desire for pride or the human desire for some certain form of, oh, you're not supposed to tell me. It's not your place to tell me this or that. And guess what happened? In verse 5, and when he would and when he would have put him to death, he feared the multitude. So why is he going to kill the prophet? Why is he going to kill John the Baptist? Because John the Baptist told him the truth. Again, the human nature doesn't seem to change, right? It's still the same till today. Because they counted him as a prophet, so he couldn't touch him on that ground. Verse 6 says, but when Herod's birthday was um, kept, the daughter of Herodias danced before them and pleased Herod. Now, that kind of a dance, you know what it is. We don't know, right? I don't want to speculate, but however, what would trigger this king to say, you know what, ask anything, all right? <laughs> and whereupon, okay, uh, whereupon he promised with an oath to give her whatsoever she would ask. Now, it's not good to be carried away with so much of authority or pride or ego. It's not good to be carried away with all of that. All right. Yeah, you can give anything. Yeah, you're the king. But to what extent? To what extent can you actually give? And she being before instructed of her mother said, give me here John the Baptist's head in a charger. And the king was sorry. Absolutely. He had to be. Nevertheless, for the old sake and them which sat with him at meat, he commanded it to be given to her. So he still had a choice to um, say, you know, you, I cannot shed blood. That's not part of the negotiation. He had a choice. But again, for the sake of his integrity, for the sake of, oh, I'm a king. I've got an ego to protect and all of that. He went ahead and beheaded John the Baptist. Having said that, I want us to pay close attention to the influence of Herodias on her daughter. The influence of mothers on daughters. Now, the king was sorry on one part, but the wife probably, or his inherited or acquired uh, uh, acquired wife, haven't looked at it like, no, the, um, John the Baptist is really challenging our authority. He's not, he's not giving me peace of mind. She had so much temerity to tell her daughter to ask for his head. That is cruel. It means that as a mom, we need to be careful of the instructions that we give our children because of her refusal to receive correction, to accept the truth that she is working in adultery. She, of course, turns down the correction and instead is going for the messenger rather than receiving the message. God help us all. We should never neglect the powerful influence mothers have on their children. And as a mom, if you're listening to me, please be careful the instructions that you give your children. Be careful and make sure that they are not rooted in self selfishness, they're not rooted in sin and evil, they're not rooted in wickedness and revenge. All of that we can see expressed through Herodias' actions against John. All right, thank you so much for listening to, uh, to this. I'll see you in the next video. Don't forget to click like, subscribe, share this video. Okay, and then let me know in the comments how this has been a blessing to you. God bless you.